from your local election headquarters. This is the Insiders with Dave Price. Almost there. Two more days until the November midterm elections. Is Mike Franken almost there? His campaigns use the signs and the t-shirts. I believe Michael Franken will defeat Chuck Grassley. But can he really defeat Iowa's longest serving U.S. Senator? Grassley has been in the Senate since 1981 and no one comes close to beating him. This week we go in depth in what could be Grassley's closest re-election campaign yet, if the polls would prove true. We start with what, if anything, Congress should do next year to slow down inflation. Well, there is a big role for the Congress of the United States. And that first big role, it's not the only role that we would have, but you mentioned economists that says we're going to have this inflation. Remember this inflation was 1.4% when Biden took the first day of office. And now it's 8.2. You're not saying he's solely to blame for that 7%, are you? Yes, I am. But what uh, but, economists would agree Well, with let's that? put it this way. He and the Democrat majority of Congress, because uh, Congress controls the purse strings. So let's go back to Larry Summers and a couple other economists that work for Democrat presidents, not Republican presidents, not a Republican point of view. But Larry Summers said before this president took over, the economy's turned around as a result of the pandemic. Don't spend any more money. Immediately within 60 days, they had spent another $2 trillion under the uh, idea that they want to overcome the pandemic. Only 9% of it is spent on the pandemic. Everything else is money going into the favorite programs of the Democrats that, uh, that uh, uh, was feeding the fires of inflation based upon what Summer says, not what Chuck Grassley said. So yes, they are responsible for it. And uh, then uh, when, if you go by what those economists says, because your question to me is, do we have a role? Yes, we have a role. If you're in a hole, you quit digging if you want to get out of that hole. So the first step for a Republican Congress uh, is, uh, is uh, don't feed those fires of inflation. Uh, then secondly, uh, maybe through some tax law, we can encourage people to save more because if they save more, it reduces demand. And I think, and I've got a couple bills in on that that would help middle class and lower income people with incentives to save that are because of eight and two tenths per percent inflation. And these tax laws have not been indexed. Indexing them would make up for this inflation and make that savings incentive as valuable as it was 20 years ago when we passed it and things of that nature. But the real effort to get inflation under control is of course the Fed and their increasing interest rates. And we don't have political interference in the Fed. We shouldn't have. Maybe sometimes you have had presidents try to influence like Trump or like uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson, people like that, or Nixon influenced it quite a bit. They should have stayed out of that. Now, I think the Fed was about six months too late starting to challenge it because everybody says it was transitory, but now we know it's persistent. But the Fed and Congress have an equal role in getting inflation down. What caused inflation in other countries? Uh, the pandemic, supply chain, some of those things are uh, you could factor into ours, but not to the same extent you can spending two billion dollars. And then in August of this year, another 714 billion dollars. And remember, these were spent with every Republican voting against it. As a Democrat, how do you talk to people about sure. what's behind inflation and what makes it better? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, I'm not in elected office. So tying me to inflation is kind of odd. I was a military officer. I was on deployment. I was uh, overseas when the seeds of this were planted. Matter of fact, I was serving my nation for almost four decades while Chuck Grassley and others offloaded industry and manufacturing overseas, which and gave tax breaks to companies to do so. And then now we've lost the ability to control the supply chain. So we have a, a lack of goods and services here in America. This is also the same Senator Grassley with a lot of seniority who didn't push through a bipartisan immigration plan. So we don't have the workers 
that we had in a pre-Trump period. Uh, and he's, you know, he's also the guy that, that watched all this happen. And you know, it's not me. And, and to say I'm going to rubber stamp for, for Joe Biden, I don't know where he gets that. Uh, I, there's many things I disagree with this administration on. And I'm not running as the, as the conventional Democrat candidate. I'm chosen by the citizens of Iowa. I'm not a Washington's candidate. Uh, I'm my own individual. You know, 10 years as an admiral in my, in my career, starting out as an enlisted guy. I'm, I'm what Iowa presented and, and, and did. So I don't think I'm gonna, I should be tagged with any of this. But what I can do is provide some solutions going forward. A, have the empathy for those that are most in a most trying situation. And there's lots of them. And Joe Biden's not increasing the price of anything. These are market forces. And as the economists will say, that 50 some percent of the price rise in existence today is as a result of excess profiteering by corporations. So what Joe Biden ought to do and what the Republicans ought to get on board with is taxing those excess profits because it's egregious that they're taking advantage of the pain that most Americans face today. And how do you, how do, you do that? How do you tax those excess profits? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a staff. I haven't thought about it th through a lot of effort, but I'll figure it out. And it's been done in the past, and we'll do it again. Uh, you mentioned immigration there. Uh, what? What? It, this is something that you know. Obviously, it doesn't matter which party's in control. Nobody right. ever does anything about it, really. So, what? What is something? <laughs> a, some bipartisan thing that could get through the Senate next year, in your well, mind, you, or should at least? Well, you know, they do do something about it. They they use it as a cudgel to hit the other party with. And, you know, we were very close to a bipartisan bill. What was that, 2013 or something like that? And then it got scuttled because, you know, it, perhaps it would view favorably for one party. And what we've developed in the political sphere in America today is this, is this, uh, this fighting, this infighting, where one party's rise is as a result of the decrement of the other. That is bad business. And, and my job is to erase that. My job is to have that rising tide, which is good for everyone. Uh, and we certainly need problem, we need changes in both parties. But uh, with an immigration plan, America needs this. Every business I speak with in Iowa needs workers. From, a, from as I say on the campaign path, and this is an actuality, a seamstress in Shenandoah to a dock worker in Dubuque. Everybody needs workers. And we're actually truncating what we could be doing from an economic standpoint in the state of Iowa because of the lack of workers. And we've got to get on the stick. My job as your senator is to push through a comprehensive immigration bill by the end of 2023. Uh, to dumb this down to an, <clears throat> uh, probably an inaccurate level here, we have so many more people coming to our border and it takes so long for them to get through the hearings and such to where we make a decision about whether they can stay or leave, right? Yeah. It's overly simplified, obviously. Sure. But at the most basic level, how do we fix that? Well, first of all, a, a well-defined process for those who come to the border. And we're going to have to re do some rewrites of Title IX and Title 42. Uh, and we shouldn't be shy about that. Uh, listen, we've got a problem at the southern border. Uh, in, in, in very colloquial terms, it's a mess. And we can't be doing that. We, we as a nation, we need to have good borders. Uh, we as a welcoming place, you know, thank goodness we still have an America where people want to come to. That, that we are, we're still, still that standard bearer. We're that blue star location, that great experiment that is the future of the next generation of, of people born elsewhere. Uh, let's be thankful we, we, can, we can keep having that and let's stop the dissension. But let's fix a well-defined process at the board. If we need new, uh, more as asylum lawyers, if we need, need drastically more immigration uh, workers in the State Department, then let's do that. But let's answer the call for, the, for the, what a business has and other, and other occupations in, in Iowa and elsewhere to get those visas uh, proffered, screening people and get them here. And make sure the people know at the border know that you're not going to stream across the border uh, with false, under false pretenses. And, um, you know, we have to have control of that thing as a nation. And as a military officer, to say that I want open borders as my opponent has, you know, it's ludicrous. I'm a military officer. He has no idea. He should uh, spend some time in the military so I can kind of exploit, explain these things to him.
What would you say you have done since you've been in office to address the situation at the border? Okay. The last time we had immigration debate was February of 2018, a bill that, uh, that was uh, sponsored by those of us under my chairmanship on the Judiciary Committee that came out to legalize DACA kids. Now, for those people that say anybody that enters our country against the law is an illegal alien, I don't uh, posit that to uh, the kids because their parents brought them here. Their parents violated our laws, but the kids didn't. And so this was supposed to legalize all these DACA kids. Uh, at the time, it wasn't necessarily to pass legislation because the president had done it and it wasn't challenged in the courts, but it didn't have any certainty. And that certainty was uh, just recently here by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, was uh, said the president doesn't have the authority to do it. So uh, under until the Supreme Court overturns that, and I don't think they will, then I think that we got to pass this legislation. So I go back to February 18th. The last time there was any immigration debate on the floor of the United States Senate was a Grassley bill, and it didn't get 60 votes to get up. So it didn't pass. But that's what I've done on immigration. Now, there's other things that if I'm in the majority again, I'm going to try to get an immigration debate started by going to the President of the United States. And I'm going to say to him something like this. You know, we can't do immigration during your first two years because you poisoned the water on immigration because you don't enforce the law at the border. And you took an oath to uphold the law and you aren't enforcing the law. So you, have, uh, you haven't helped move immigration along. If you can show me and the people of this country that you're going to enforce it, I think we can do a lot of things on immigration, particularly the less, uh, the less uh, controversial things, unskilled workers, skilled workers, uh, DACA kids, professional people like engineers, doctors, and nurses. Uh, we've already had a hearing in the Judiciary Committee that I participated in just to get nurses into this country. And so Senator Durbin and I sit down and say, can we get enough support for bipartisanship to move it just to get nurses into the country? Uh, and, uh, and I came to the conclusion on our side of the aisle because of this poisoning of the president not enforcing the law that you can't, that we can't move anything now. To oversimplify this, we have so many folks who come to the border who are seeking asylum and it takes forever for them to get through the process. Is that fair? One thing that would help that, we only have about, I think, 350 immigration judges. We need about 750, maybe 400 more. And would you put them all there? Uh, New Gingrich was here a couple weeks ago. You probably heard about this, but he's suggesting we hire a bunch of those, put them in Texas there. When folks come in, 24 hour period, yay or nay, you, get, you either get to stay here or you get sent back home. Can, is that some, is something like that practical? I don't know whether it's practical, but I'd be in favor of it if it is practical. Because the, these people get spread out through the 50 states of the United States, and most of them never show up for a hearing. So then they're in the darkness, uh, in the shadows. Uh, you don't know where they are. Should, uh, about 80 or 90% of them don't have a legitimate reason for asylum. You know, everybody thinks you come here for a, a better life, the American dream. And I don't blame people for seeing America w for that personal opportunity for them. But uh, the uh, uh, economic reasons for coming to this country is not a reason to have a, uh, to be an asylee. Uh, the legitimate thing is you're going to be persecuted in your country for religious or uh, maybe ethnic reasons or for political reasons, not for economic reasons. All right, up next, the issue where Grassley says Franken is lying.
Now abortion rights, what the U.S. Senate candidates say versus what you might have seen on the TV ads. I view the right for a woman to choose to be a human rights issue. And as a male, to push my belief system on a woman, I, I consider that an affront. And the number of abortions which occur in that last trimester, right at the, at the end of a, of a pregnancy, is what, 1%? And by the time that's done, that child has more than likely been named. Um, announcements have been sent out. Painting has done in the, in the crib. Uh, all that's been done. This is a loss of a future member of a family. And it was done for a malady of mom or the child. Uh, and there's r medical reasons for it. So the bottom line in that case is you don't need a constitutional lawyer or Chuck Grassley to be standing in the delivery room being a referee as to that woman's health. And I mean, that, that alone is, is such an affront to common sense. Uh, and in the end, you know, we had Roe as written 50 years ago. And what we've accomplished, what Chuck Grassley has accomplished by giving us this partisan Supreme Court, you know, he gets, he gets a lot of mileage out of being this senior guy. But when, in fact, he jumped off the Ag uh, Committee to be on the judiciary so he could impart his morality going back to the 1950s on all of Iowa. There are commercials running statewide that said that uh, you are going to ban all abortions. What do you think uh, of those? That's a lie. And, uh, and it's a lie from this standpoint. There's public records, plus even statements I made during this campaign that I'm for exceptions for life of a mother, for uh, uh, rape and incest. And, uh, and I'm a pro-life person through my life pro-mother, pro-family. It's my opponent that has the most extreme point of view. He would allow abortion up to one minute before birth. Uh, he would uh, have taxpayers pay for abortions, and he would not even let parental consent in the case of a minor having an abortion uh, be a factor. And I think that's the most extreme position you can have in, on abortion. And I'll bet 15 or no more than 15 or 20% in this country support that extreme position. Do you see Congress getting involved with this next year? Is it too, too, is it too unknown of an issue to, because of the way the makeup is undetermined? No, I think both pro-life and pro-choice uh, people are going to want to make it an issue at the federal level. But I look this way. You see, for 50 years, we all had to accept Roe v. Wade. It was the law of the land. Now that's overturned, so it goes back to the states. It's better to have the states determine this uh, based upon what elected representatives and people feeding their position to their elected representatives because they can't go to unelected justices of the Supreme Court to give their opinion. Straight ahead, what the past shows about how challenging it would be for Chuck Grassley to lose this time around.